Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. You know, a lot of people set an alarm clock every morning to wake themselves up so they're not too late for work. Well, I'm going to continue to sound the alarm every day as well and try to wake people up before it's too late. That's why I do these videos, to declare the signs of the times that we live in, and try to encourage people to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to watch what's going on around the world, to open up their Bible, read the Word of God, and make sure that they have a relationship with Jesus Christ before it's too late. World events are escalating so fast toward the end times it's unbelievable <clears throat> I'm reminded of one of my favorite songs when I talk to people this is what I, this is so true one of my favorite songs is by Misty Edwards it's called People Get Ready she says in that song I can hear the rhythm of the lion of the tribe of Judah and I certainly can too just by watching the news Every single day, there are more and more signs that the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, is about to return. The other thing that's funny, is it's not funny, it's sad, but it's really, really true, is another line in that song that she sings, called People Get Ready, is people walk around with their fingers in their ears saying, I don't want to hear the sound of the coming king. And I basically had somebody tell me that one day. Someone who I had been sharing a lot of uh, current events with and keeping them updated actually said to me, I don't want to hear this stuff. I don't want to know what's going on. If time is short, I want to enjoy the time that I have left. Sounds logical and reasonable, except for one thing. You're going to live your life for this world that is about to end and sacrifice your soul for eternity so you can enjoy this world while it lasts? It's a very, very, very dangerous attitude. I saw a guy wearing a t shirt the other day. In front of the shirt, some sort of Irish whiskey. Back of the shirt said whatever that whiskey was over Jesus not forever but for now. What a philosophy on life. I'd rather have whiskey over Jesus at least for now. You know, we're not guaranteed our next breath. We're certainly not guaranteed tomorrow. Whether or not Jesus comes back, you could stop breathing at any minute and be in eternity. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Your eternal soul and your eternal destination is not worth risking for anything this world has to offer. Having said that, let's get into some news stories, because again, there's plenty to talk about. Uh, real quickly, a, a man in Saudi Arabia has died. Uh, they tested him for Ebola. The uh, tests have not been confirmed yet, but he had come back from uh, Sierra Leone in Africa. That's obviously got uh, Ebola, a huge outbreak of Ebola. The guy came back, had those types of symptoms and has died. So there's a chance that the Ebola virus has now been in Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> I'm looking at an article here out of the Huffington Post. <clears throat> it, World, he World Health Organization, the Ebola outbreak is a public health emergency. The World Health Organization urged nations 
worldwide to donate money and resources to stop the spread of Ebola as it, is, as it declared the outbreak in West Africa to be an international public health emergency. The latest outbreak is the largest and longest ever recorded for the di disease, uh, which has a death rate of about 50% and so far has killed at least 961 people. <clears throat> Countries affected to date simply do not have the capacity to manage an outbreak of this size and complexity on their own. I urge the international community to provide this support on the most urgent basis possible. This is the uh, chief of the World Health Organization, Margaret Chan, talking. She added that the world's collective health security to collect the world's collective health security depends on curbing the spread of the killer virus in West Africa. <clears throat> It says the UN agency convened an expert committee this week to assess the severity of the, of the epidemic uh, and the impact uh, so far of the world's of the WHO's declaration is unclear. Uh, so statements won't save lives. Uh, for weeks we have been repeating that a massive medical uh, and public health response is desperately needed. Lives are being lost because the response is too slow. I'm going to go ahead and post this into the description box. Um, it's just getting crazy with what's going on, though, with the Ebola virus. Um, and again, Jesus said last days that there would be uh, pestilence. And uh, we're starting to see it grow more and more. Uh, there's also, I'll, I'll end up doing a video later on, I think, on it. But there's a strange flesh-eating virus in the water down in Florida that's killed people this year. It's been killing people. Strange flesh-eating virus. Uh, just strange things starting to happen. Unprecedented things all around the world. Uh, but let's get into uh, some wars and rumors of wars talk again. Because uh, certainly there's a lot of that. Um, Hamas, of course, broke the ceasefire early this morning before it was, before it was up. Started uh Launching rockets into Israel again, so that fighting is renewed. Here's an article of the Eretz Sheva. Hamas spokesman, ceasefire wasn't extended because of Israel. He says the Israeli stubbornness resulted in ceasefire ending. Hamas spokesman Sami Abu Zuri on Friday laid the blame on Israel for the ceasefire in Gaza of not being extended, saying the Jewish state did not provide a clear response to Hamas's conditions. <clears throat> Speaking at a news conference in Gaza City and quoted by the Mayan news agency, Abu Zuri, Abu Zuri said that the lack of response undermined Palestinian demands and that Israeli stubbornness led to not extending the ceasefire. He accused Israel of stalling and wasting time, adding that it must accept all of Hamas's conditions. He said that Israel rejected the establishment of an airport or a seaport and refuses to expand the fishing zone. <clears throat> Guys, Hamas has no say in this matter. Israel can wipe them completely off the map as soon as they decide they want to do so. What a joke for Hamas to think that they have any bargaining power in this entire thing. They're a terrorist organization that can't even come close to standing up to Israel. Look at the damage Israel has done while trying not to really do that much damage. And of course, again, the world is just going to keep coming down on the side of the Palestinians. Uh, but again, I'll put this also in the description box so you can check it out. Uh, <clears throat> Let's look at another article. This is uh, Israel has, um, excuse me, United States has now started bombing uh, some targets in, in Iraq, some of the ISIS targets. Here's an article, U.S. bomb, this is out of uh, Newsmax, U.S. bombs ISIS targets in plan to prevent Iraq genocide. U.S. warplanes bombed uh, Islamic fighters marching on Iraq's Kurdish capital on Friday. The ISIS fighters who have beheaded and crucified captives in their drive to eradicate unbelievers have advanced to within a half hour's drive of Arbil, capital of Iraq's 
Kurdish region and a hub for U.S. oil companies. They also seized control of Iraq's biggest dam. Kurdish authorities confirmed on Friday, which could allow them to flood cities and cut off vital water and electricity supplies. The Pentagon said two F-A-18 aircraft from an aircraft carrier in the Gulf uh, had dropped laser-guided 500-pound bombs on the fighters' artillery and other airstrikes that targeted mortar positions and an Islamic State envoy. And Ironically, the uh, name of the aircraft carrier that we're using is the George Bush. Uh, <clears throat> it goes on to say that this will last um, as long as necessary to achieve our objectives, but don't look for ISIS to give up anytime soon. So I kind of get the feeling that this might drag on longer than uh, our government is telling us, or longer that they're plan longer than they're really planning on uh, accomplishing. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, but in response to that, here's uh, an article also out of Newsmax. It says ISIS, we will raise flag of all. Excuse me. <coughs> We will raise flag of Allah in White House. Well, ISIS, I hate to break it to you, but I think Barack Obama's already beaten you to that, the raising the flag of Allah in the White House. Uh, but this article goes on to say the Islamic State has warned the United States that it plans to attack America and raise the flag of Allah in the White House. I say to America that the Islamic Caliphate, Caliphate has been established. Abu Mosa, a spokesman for the terror group, also known as ISIS, told Vice Media in a video interview posted online Thursday, Don't be cowards and attack us with drones. Instead, send your soldiers, the one we humiliated in, Re in Iraq. We humiliate them everywhere, God willing, and we will raise the flag of Allah in the White House. <laughs> oh boy. Um... <clears throat> The ISIS threat to conquer the United States was issued before President Obama announced Thursday that he planned to authorize targeted airstrikes against the hardline Sunni jihadists to prevent the genocide of ethnic minorities in Iraq, including tens of thousands of fleeing Christians, as well as to protect U.S. personnel in Erbil and Baghdad. The Islamic State has captured vast swaths of territory in Iraq and Syria, as it attempts to create a caliphate in the region with its shadow, shadowy leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi as the caliph. Oh boy, I'm so tired of this and it's just starting guys. This Muslim thing is just really starting. Um, it's just going to get worse. going to get worse. Um, Let's look at one more article. This one is very, very important. I'll save this one for last. This is out of the Times of Israel today. And I want to go through this one a little more in detail. Because um, I think this is a very, very, very important article. Um, and it has Daniel 9.27 implications. Um, let's read that real quick. I've read it several times in other videos. But let's take a look at it again. Daniel 9... 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Uh, but the, the first... Uh, part of that verse, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, is the key element that we're looking at right now. Um, so, here's the article out of uh, Times of Israel. Livni presents plan to end conflict with Hamas and restart talks with the PA. Uh, Justice Minister, Minister Zippy Livni said she presented Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Friday with a diplomatic proposal to end the fighting in Gaza while restarting peace talks with the Palestinian Authority. Her plan would include, and this is a detailed plan. It's the first time I've ever seen a plan laid out like this with this much detail in it. Her plan would include, in this order, a ceasefire, the immediate transfer of humanitarian aid to Gaza, 
steps that would answer Israel's security demands while also addressing Gazan's economic needs. The recognition of Palestinian, Palestinian Authority rule over Gaza overseeing one set of armed forces. The establishment of a Palestinian Authority system that would ensure funds and aid would reach civilians and not terror leaders. The opening of the crossings with Gaza and the simultaneous establishment of a system that would bar the transfer of raw materials, such as concrete, for the purposes of terror, and the renewal of peace talks with the Palestinian Authority. <clears throat> the steps we are seeking do not need Hamas's approval. If Hamas wanted to have the blockade lifted since 2007 when it seized power from the PA, it had a choice. It would have stopped the violence, recognized the known agreements signed between Israel and the Palestinians, including renouncing terrorism, and recognized Israel as a Jewish state. It would have then become a legitimate power. Hamas does not really want to have the blockade lifted. It wants legitima legitimacy as a terror organization that rules Gaza, and Israel will not agree to this. Uh, so she goes on to say that uh, they will continue operating militarily as long as Hamas fires on Israeli cities. All military options, from my point of view, are back on the table since Hamas has resumed fire. But here's the very important paragraph. A peace agreement would not be with Hamas, but against it. Which is why what I propose presents a new Gaza order with Egypt, with Israel, with the Palestinian Authority, and with other regional countries, she said. We want to reach an agreement, not with those who fire on us, but with those who don't use violence and terror against us, she added. <clears throat> The former chief negotiator with the Palestinian Authority said she is against negotiating with Hamas and does not think Israel should meet the, the group's grandiose demands for a seaport and airport and a crossing between Gaza and the West Bank. These are things that are part of a permanent agreement, she said, and they should not be given to Hamas as a reward for its use of force. It would be out of the question for Hamas to retain its arms under a PA-led Gaza. Instead of Engaging in this bizarre in this bizarre of what to give Hamas, so the quiet returns. Let's look for another opportunity. Let's think outside the box. She added, "U.S. brokered peace talks with the with the PA ended in late April uh, after Hamas signed a unity pact with Hamas, which prompted Netanyahu to discontinue negotiations, not wanting to negotiate with the government that rested on the support of a terror group." Let's go back up here again, though. I want, to back, I want to go back over that paragraph again. This is very, very important. She says, A peace agreement would not be with Hamas, but against it. Which is why I propose, uh, why, why, which is why what I propose presents a new Gaza order with Egypt, with Israel, with the Palestinian Authority, and with other regional countries, she said which would exactly be a covenant with many. And it's apparent that there are that it looks like they're going to take this terror this terrorist activity like ISIS and Hamas and Hezbollah and say that they condemn those things and the so-called moderate Middle Eastern Muslim nations may sign this agreement as a, and say that they are against terrorism. Now, this is definitely this would definitely be a peace agreement that would be considered a covenant with many, Egypt, with Israel, the Palestinian Authority, and other regional countries. <clears throat> that is very, very big news. And again, you know, the people here in the United States have had it with war. They don't want to see us getting involved in more more wars. Um the wars and rumors of wars are, cra are going crazy. It's certainly potential down the road that we may have to get involved with the Russia-Ukraine thing if Russia gets more involved. Uh, you know, again, I say this a lot, but the world is waiting for a person to come in and confirm this covenant. The world is ready, unfortunately, for what's going to be a false peace agreement. 
But this is a very, very interesting article with this very detailed uh, peace plan that, that she's got or for, to go forward for the, to renew the discussions. And uh, I just think we're at that time, guys. I really feel like this covenant is going to get confirmed soon. How soon? Who knows? No one really knows. No one knows day of the hour of this stuff that's going to happen. But all the signs are here. And it is sure getting exciting and things are moving faster and faster and faster. So I want to encourage you. Open up your eyes, open up your heart, open up your Bible. Read it every day and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Well, first of all, make sure you're saved. Make sure you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Make sure you are born again through the blood of Jesus Christ. So you are saved, washed in the blood, and ready for His return. And then you can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal Himself to you and to help you understand what the Word of God is saying. And watch the news and, and discern what's going on. When you watch these videos, test everything I'm saying with the Word of God. Go to God in prayer about it. We are coming down to the wire. Things are getting really, really, really crazy. And time is getting really, really short. And I just pray that we'll all be counted worthy to escape all the things that are going to come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. All the signs are here. Keep looking up. God bless everyone.